Rise, Meg. The Force will be with you. Teeny! Hello everyone and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about some really exciting news for the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi series. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's just dive straight into it. Todd Chernyowski is joining the Obi-Wan Kenobi series for Disney+. Plus. Now a few of you might not know who this is, but let's get into it and you'll see why this is such big news. It's now been confirmed that Todd Chernyowski will serve as the production designer on the Obi-Wan series. Chernyowski is no stranger to the franchise, having worked as the supervising art director on The Last Jedi, for which he was nominated at the Art Directors Guild in 2018 for excellence in production design. His most recent credits though are not in Star Wars but Star Trek, including various episodes of Star Trek Discovery as well as the entire first season of Star Trek Picard. He's also served as an art director on major films like Zero Duck 30, Sucker Punch, Tomorrowland, Alice in Wonderland, The BFG and Avatar. So look, you might be wondering why this is such huge news. This guy is an absolute prodigy when it comes to visuals, production design and art coordination within the movies and series that he's worked on. He's only worked on one Star Wars movie so far, The Last Jedi, but regardless of whether you loved it or hated it, the visuals were spectacular. Now I know this new information doesn't concern any characters or casting rumours, but not enough credit goes to those who work behind the scenes on making Star Wars movies and series look as amazing as they do. And so having someone like Todd Chernyowski working on the Kenobi series is a very epic feat indeed. Now that this news has come out, I fully expect the Kenobi series to be visually mind-blowing and some of the visuals of Tatooine and wherever else the show takes us will certainly be worth the wait. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below guys because you might disagree and you might say that the visuals for The Last Jedi were not good. I disagree with that, I think they were amazing. But I welcome all opinions so let me know below. Now we're going to have a little bit of a change of pace because we're going to be speaking about The Bad Batch. This is an article from Inverse and they're talking about a plot hole which is finally going to be solved in the Clone Wars spin-off. We have just under two months to go until The Bad Batch releases and I can't wait. Just a quick reminder before I dive into this article, I will be covering every episode with full breakdowns and as always giving you my analysis. So let's take a look at this article because they're speaking about something which needs to be solved in the Bad Batch, specifically how the clone troopers became the stormtroopers. Now I'm fully aware of the fact that there are canon answers out there, but none of them are in depth enough to show us what happened. So let's take a look at what this article says. Say what you will about the guy, but Emperor Palpatine was great with accomplishing his goals. The weirdest thing about the Empire in the classic trilogy era of Star Wars isn't about the rise of Palpatine's regime. In fact, the biggest plot wonkiness in Star Wars is found in how Palpatine Palpatine maintained it. On a big scale, we know that his long-term plan was maintaining control through fear. If your planet got out of line, Palpatine would blow it up with the Death Star. But the real question is, what about before that? What about between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope? The short answer, if you messed with Palps, he sent in the Stormtroopers. Or before that, the clone army. But when was the transition and how did the switch happen? It's more than likely that the Bad Batch is going to finally answer this utterly confusing part of Star Wars history. In The Force Awakens, Kylo Ren backhandedly tells Hux that maybe Snoke should consider a clone army. But the real question is, and one that Star Wars canon has never answered convincingly, what was the main reason that Palpatine decided to swap out obedient clones for human recruitments in the form of stormtroopers? So far, we have a very vague answer from Wikipedia, and it is as follows. The Galactic Republic was supplanted by the Empire, and the clone troopers who formed the backbone of the Grand Army of the Republic became the first generation of Imperial stormtroopers. During the early years of the Imperial era, the cloning operation on Kamino was shut down as the Empire turned to conscription and recruitment in order to fill the stormtrooper ranks. The remaining clones were retired from service due to their rapid aging, their legacy inherited by natural born humans who were also trained to render total allegiance to the Emperor and his new order. The canonicity of this explanation is mostly derived from a non-fiction book called The Star Wars Book, written by Pablo Hidalgo. But if we're being honest, the explanation has not been spelt out in actual storytelling, but rather background exposition. We have vague ideas as to why the clone army became a human army, but we haven't truly and in-depth been shown why this happened. Imagine if Anakin's backstory was still like a short PowerPoint presentation. That's the equivalent of what we have right now to do with the clones and the stormtroopers. Poking holes in the explanation as it lies, the aging process with clones is up for debate. In Star Wars Rebels, we see prominent clone trooper Rex age normally. 
Secondly, the Empire couldn't figure out how to just start over with a new clone template, but why is this? Was Jango Fett truly the only person that they could clone? This is silly. The clone army worked really well for at least three years, using one guy as a template. With very few exceptions, millions of clone troopers obediently carried out Order 66 and straight up killed their Jedi generals. From Palpatine's point of view, this is a good system. Why then replace it with more conventional stormtroopers? One assumes the stormtroopers don't begin their life with mind control chips, automatically making them less reliable than clones. Right now, the explanation for this translates to, it was just easier. When first watching Attack of the Clones, the visual evidence leads to the conclusion that the clones are the stormtroopers from the original trilogy. But having someone come in and tell you, well, no, they switched to humans is very strange enough to feel like a mistake. But now that the Bad Batch is coming out, we could finally have an explanation because we're going to see the first few years of the Empire on screen, albeit in animated form. Assuming the Bad Batch sticks to this canon, then that means that we might actually see the Stormtrooper clone changeover up close. In the Bad Batch trailers, we've seen at least one instance of these ex-troopers collaborating with Tarkin, and we also see them interacting with what looks to be stormtroopers. So the question there is pretty obvious. Are the stormtroopers encountered by the Bad Batch in this show former clones or part of the new human recruitments? In the coda to the final episode of Clone Wars, Darth Vader is surrounded by a bunch of stormtroopers who seem to be chatting away with voices that are not like the clones, strongly implying that this changeover happened really fast. Then again, we don't know exactly when the Vader scene happens relative to the rest of the timeline. It's after Order 66, sure, but when? A year, two, or even more? Because the Bad Batch is literally going to focus on a group of botch clones, then it stands to reason that these characters will have some stake in what happened to their other clone brethren. Right now, background canon tells us all these clones were just retired because it was too much trouble. But what if there was much more to it than that? Dave Filoni will certainly have answers. If the Bad Batch solves any old Star Wars canon mysteries, it will easily be this one. And bear in mind guys, the answer could very well impact everything we thought we knew about this changing of the guard. This is real food for thought and I can't wait to see if they do explain this on May the 4th. But what do you guys think? Do you have an explanation as to why the stormtroopers were eventually brought in? How do you think that transition happened and do you think we'll see it in the Bad Batch? Let me know that and all of your thoughts of today's update in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed this one guys and if you did be sure to give me a like, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell, do all that good stuff down below and also if you're feeling generous please consider heading over to Patreon where for just two or ten dollars a month you can get exclusive access to content that's not found here on YouTube. I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.